Hello, I'm Dale Black. Today's lesson from the Bible is one of the most exciting lessons that I can possibly be involved in because of how powerful this information has been in my own life. One of the things that Satan hates most is when Christians fast. Why? Because fasting is a real source of personal power to the believer. It's not that fasting in and of itself has power, no, not at all. But when done properly, spiritual fasting puts your flesh underneath your spirit and it builds your spirit up to where you become dominant over your flesh. What is the result? The result is that a believer can become closer to God and by being closer to God, you will experience more spiritual power, more personal power. Now, it's not your power, it's God's power, but you can use that power in your daily life. So when you go out and fast, are you being hypocritical? If you tell your wife or your daughter and kids that you're gonna go fast, no. For they, the Bible says, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do, do not appear to men to be fasting. But to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Sometimes it's beneficial to let a trusted friend, a spouse, a church board or minister partners or key personnel know about your personal fast so that they can intercede in prayer for the purposes of that fast. It's not for recognition, is it? Remember, it's about the heart. Your motive for fasting should be sincere and it should be between you and God. So do everything for the Lord and for his anointing and nothing for men. The Bible points out that there is also a partial fast. Pay close attention because if you have trouble fasting, this is how you start. You start with a partial fast. The Bible doesn't use the word partial, but we see the principles of such in the, in the word of God. For example, it says they fasted sweets. It also says that they ate other foods but refrained from sweets. This indicates that giving up something that you enjoy as a sign to put the Lord that you put him in that first place is a good thing. Break. This indicates giving up something you enjoy as a sign to the Lord that you are putting him in first place. It also tells our flesh that our spirit is in control, not the body or the soul. I started fasting seriously in 1982 regularly and have done hundreds of an assortment of types of fast, always with a wonderful outcome. But don't hear me incorrectly. When I go out and fast, if I only fast, sometimes if I only fast one meal or even sometimes only one day, the result isn't always outstanding. If I do that one day every week, now that starts having a cumulative effect. But if I'll go out and spend three days or more in fasting and prayer, Every time I do that, I come back with just jaw-dropping, astonishing, astonishing revelation from the Lord. For me, it always takes about three days of fasting before I recognize serious uh, positive results. And maybe that's just me. But beyond the third day, my spirit becomes much more in tune with the Lord. And my spirit seems to be much more able to hear the still small voice. This is why this is so powerful and so exciting to talk about. Because Christians who learn about fasting 
have power that they will have no other way. So the purpose of this video is to help answer the most common questions that we get in our emails and our texting about fasting. For example, when do you fast? How do you do it? How long should I fast? Do I just fast one meal? Do I fast all day? Do I have to fast 40 days? And during that time, do I have to pray? Food, what about food? What can I eat? What can I not eat? What about water? Can I have water? Can I not have? What are the benefits other than losing weight about fasting? So if you're ready to learn about this powerful tool, I call this Fasting 101 or the Basics of Fasting. Let's get started. Are you ready? Before we get started, I want to thank our partners and donors for together we're reaching people all over the globe with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the teaching of his uncompromising word. If you'd like to partner with us, simply go to daleblack.org, click on the partnership button, and uh, may God bless you back multiplied over. Today we're talking about fasting, and my daughter, my wife, and me, our family, we have a fasting challenge that we will uh, challenge you with at the end of this video. It's our family's challenge to you. It's called Operation Humble Heart, and if you'll stay tuned, we'll tell you a little bit about it at the end of this video. Today's topic is fasting. Stated very simply, biblical fasting is refraining from food for a spiritual purpose. Biblical fasting takes some discipline and strength, which the Holy Spirit is always ready to provide. Again, though, the great benefit that fasting is, it's going to strengthen your spirit. Remember, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. You need to strengthen your spirit, and fasting is the fastest way to strengthen it, I found. Fasting and prayer. Fasting will build you up from the inside, and it'll help you become more dominant over your flesh. The flesh, remember, is your body and your soul. Almost all of us experience times when the day-to-day -day business of life and the constant demands on our body and our mind seem to get in the way of our relationship with God. These things of this world end up shorting out our personal, physical, emotional, and mental electrical circuits, so to speak. The strength and the flow of God's power is reduced sometimes to just a trickle in our lives because of these things. The world is becoming crazier and busier, and so it's even more necessary than ever to keep our spirit strong. So fasting is a valuable spiritual tool. Can you imagine a carpenter who doesn't have a hammer or a pilot who doesn't have a control yoke? Fasting is the tool that you will need to overcome when the temptations are great. Now, all fasting is not the same. There are different types of fasting, and it can be broken down into basically two categories. The first category is a proclaimed fast. You'll see that in the book of Joel, chapter 1, verse 14, this type of fast is used for the purpose of bringing an individual or a group of believers to a place where they can hear from God much, much more clearly. Oftentimes, a proclaimed fast is called when believers are needing to unite together and move in one direction, toward God, toward His purposes, possibly to overcome some resistance that is blocking their way. So, using the proclaimed fast for a, for a specific need is what it's used for. The second type of fasting is what I call a personal fast. If you look at Matthew chapter 6, 
This is the type of fast that's described, and it's the kind of fasting that I have personally used for decades, and it always, always works well for me. All of my personal fast have yielded amazing things and gratifying rewards. Not the first hour of fasting, so usually not even the first day, but oh my word, breakthroughs, understandings. It's like I can see a new dimension after I've been fasting for just a few days. Everything spiritual, including fasting, is about the heart of a person. That's what you are as a, a spirit. Your spirit and heart are the same. You'll want to be cautious if you want to receive the spiritual rewards. Because Jesus taught that when you fast, if you talk too much about it, if you look distressed or you look like you're depriving yourself so that others will think that you're super spiritual, the Bible tells us that you will have received your reward from men and that's all the reward you're going to get. So you can either receive the reward from the admiration of men or women, or you can receive your reward from God. So the key is to fast in relative secrecy that, so that God can reward you openly. But let's not overreact by being too religious. Jesus does not say or he doesn't mean that no one should ever know or ever find out about the fact that you're fasting. That's not what Jesus was referring to. As usual, the Lord is talking about the heart. God is instructing us not to use fasting for attention getting or for recognition or for manipulation as was very common in, her, in his earthly ministry. So check your heart. Conduct your fast as, as unto the Lord. And I, I, I mentioned one time on video that I was doing a fast and I asked people to pray for me. I can't believe how many people said, Dale, what are you doing? You can't do that. You, did you, don't you know that if you tell people you're fasting? Again, this is about the heart. No one's trying to gain anything other than prayer support from a handful of wonderful partners and friends that I have. So be, be aware that if a few people know that you're fasting that are close to you and you're just letting them know that you can be prayed for during this time, that's just fine. It helps us if you like and subscribe to our channel and share these videos with a friend. Make sure you help us uh, combat the censorship that we get every week. We have a real battle going on. We're preaching the uncompromising truth. We're preparing the body of Christ for the last days and we're being censored left and right. And uh, the battle is fierce, but our battle is the Lord's. If you'd like to help us, make sure you are uh, resubscribing so that you don't get dropped off automatically. We lose several people every day, no matter uh, what we do, uh, because YouTube is trying to censor us in that way. We've lost about 50% of our subscribers just because of the censorship. So be aware of that. With everything that's going on in our country and around the world, our family has made the decision to begin fasting one day a week to pray for the leaders of our country, to pray for our family, to pray for our partners, and to pray for the world events that we're living in. We're calling what is called, we're launching what is called Operation Humble Heart, and we're asking people that join us with fasting one meal and praying at noon every Monday at noon Pacific Standard Time. If you'd like to join us in this challenge, and fast one day or one meal, that's all, then please let us know on Facebook, on our Facebook page, and comment below on this video, or send us an email. Ultimately, fasting is far more about focusing on just food. Fasting is taking the focus off of 
the things on this world and in order to focus on the things of God. And fasting gets power in prayer and it helps people unite together. If you'd like to join this Operation Humble Heart and fast one meal a week, let us know about it. We'd love to have you part of that. With the demonic warfare that we've seen playing out on our televisions, it reminds me of the quote from Jesus in Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, when he says, This kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. We should not underestimate fasting as a powerful weapon in the spiritual arena, in the fight against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual forces of evil. That comes from Ephesians chapter 6, by the way. So join us for Operation Humble Heart, beginning at noon, Pacific Standard Time, every Monday. We're starting right away. So we'll begin praying for all of our partners, and we'd love to pray for you if you'll just let us know who you are. Just email uh, info at daleblack.org. That's all the time we have for today, but keep in mind that fasting is a powerful tool for all believers. Jesus said, when you fast. See, here's a PowerPoint about fasting. He knows that we're going to fast. So when you fast, do it this way. So remember, fasting doesn't change God. Fasting changes you. This is Dale Black reminding you once again that with God, nothing is impossible.